What's up guys, Miles here with 95 mac and today we're gonna to talk about these two devices, my MacBook Pro and my Mac Mini. Both of these are running Apple Silicon chips, but the MacBook Pro here is arguably the more powerful machine overall. If you look at charts and numbers, there's no doubt that the M1 Pro and M1 Max chip, which is in this MacBook, is more powerful than the Mac Mini. But I must admit that I've been using the Mac Mini a lot more for the vast majority of my video production projects. And here's why. Firstly, I wanna get this simple fact out of the way. This is not meant to be a MacBook Pro hate video because if I truly disliked this machine, I would have gotten rid of it a long time ago. Overall, I very much like this MacBook Pro, but I feel as though M1 Pro and M1 Max weren't really all they were cracked up to be for me. If you watch my MacBook Pro review on the channel, you know that I said the M1 Pro chip is a great performer, but in comparison to M1, it isn't like leagues ahead. There are a handful of technical benefits of M1 Pro and M1 Max over the basic M1 chip, the CPU core count, the GPU core count, but somehow everyday performance doesn't really differ that much in my experience going back and forth between these devices every Every day, opening applications, rendering out photos and videos, all of it feels very similar unless I'm pushing either device to the limits. I will say that there's more moments where I've gotten the Mac Mini's fans to come on than on my MacBook Pro, but M1 in general is still very quick, so I've stuck with it. The display is also a factor in why I don't use the MacBook Pro as my primary editing machine, and it's not because the display isn't good, because it's quite the opposite. This mini LED HDR display with ProMotion offers a viewing experience unlike anything I've owned before. The color accuracy, the brightness, the dynamic range you get with this panel is so good and every time I load up HDR footage I'm reminded of that. But the problem is that this MacBook's display is too small for me to edit on. I'm used to using 27 inch 32 inch displays and with 4k resolution which gives me a whole lot of space to work with when trying to get stuff done and as good as the display on the MacBook Pro is it just can't compete with the size of my main editing display. And the reason I haven't just bought a Pro Display XDR is the very same reason you haven't just bought a Pro Display XDR. Many people's responses to this would just be to plug in the MacBook to my display when I edit videos. And yes, I could simply take an HDMI cable and hook it right up to my display, but then I'm gonna have to unplug it along with everything else when I have to leave the house and take my MacBook with me. And that brings me to the port situation, because even though this MacBook comes equipped with three very useful Thunderbolt 4 ports, I find the IO setup of the Mini to be a lot more desktop friendly. Yes, it's only got the two Thunderbolt 3 ports, but it's also got two USB-A ports and Ethernet. And yeah, I'll admit Ethernet isn't a huge priority for me to have these days, but those USB-A ports have been very useful for me in my setup because I use Thunderbolt SSDs and other Thunderbolt peripherals so I've got to prioritize my Thunderbolt ports on the Mini for connecting to Thunderbolt docks so I can get those Thunderbolt specific peripherals connected. But because of those USB-A ports, I can still connect devices like my speakers and amplifiers that use USB-A connectors. Overall, I just really prefer the, the set it and forget it nature of the Mac Mini. I personally don't wanna disconnect and reconnect stuff every day. I also have a fair amount of stuff on my desk so that Mini form factor is just super clutch. It's never in the way of or awkwardly placed like I'd have to do with my MacBook Pro. And yes, I'm just stating the obvious by saying that the Mac Mini is a better desktop than the MacBook Pro, but it's also 90% as good on the performance side of things. And I found that I wanted to preserve that convenience that comes with the Mac Mini, as opposed to having the most powerful workstation possible at my fingertips. And I think that because of the gear I use to create these videos, that's pretty significant. So with everything I've just said, I just wanna to get to the heart of the matter, which which is a potentially controversial take. And that's what I think the Mac mini with M1 and 16 gigs of RAM is the best value performance Mac that you can buy right now if you don't have a preference between laptop and desktop. You can get this mini with 16 gigs of RAM for under $900 at various online retailers. And for that money, there is simply no better Mac if you ask me. The MacBook Air with M1 comes close, but it just doesn't have that same level of functionality with only having two Thunderbolt 3 ports. It's simply not enough for someone with a setup like mine. There's a rumor that the M2 Mac mini could be coming this year and perhaps even before we get the high-end performance variant of the M1 Mac 
mini, which sounds very odd now that I'm saying it out loud, but there are only a few things that I want from this M2 Mac mini to make it a perfect upgrade from my current M1 mini. Firstly, I'll even say that if Apple can maintain the very current pricing for M2, then I wouldn't even ask for more Thunderbolt ports. We can just stick with two, at least for the basic Mac mini, but I'd really like HDMI 2.1 because that would truly allow you to use displays to their fullest potential that you can't right now with this Mac mini. It's also imperative that Apple fixes the RAM management situation. If you're someone who regularly uses intense applications on Apple Silicon Macs, then I'm sure you've encountered the you've run out of memory prompt. It's super annoying and something I truly hope they fix across the board with M2 Max and beyond. On the video editing side of things, all I really desire is better HEVC encoding and decoding because I shoot on the Canon R5, which shoots in 8.265. And so far, the Mac Minis and the M1 MacBook Pros and iMacs, they can all handle that footage well, but it could be a little bit better, especially for 8K. And then lastly, I think 10 gigabit ethernet should definitely be a standard on the Mac mini. And if M2 has all of these things, I'd say that's probably gonna be my desktop computer, unless they do something amazing with this flagship iMac that we still have yet to see. But regardless of what I've said in this video, both of these Macs have been great for me in their own ways. Obviously, as a completely mobile workstation, the MacBook Pro has been an amazing machine for me when tackling projects on the go. The battery life isn't fantastic, but it's definitely good enough for my current needs. And the Mac mini is obviously a very, very capable desktop for the money, perhaps the most capable desktop for the size and money. And if you wanna check out the best deals I've found on either of these computers, be sure to check the links in the description down below. But that's about it for this one. I just want to talk about my current computing situation and see if anyone is experiencing something similar. For anyone who has the new MacBook Pro or M1 mini, how are you getting on with it? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.